uh, welcome from wherever you are. I think there are several hours of the day uh, represented. So good morning, good evening, good afternoon, and uh, uh, bon appetit if it is the case. So this is the second webinar, as uh, uh, Emma just reminded everybody, and it is about uh, a process of uh, self-strengthening of ICCAs. For whoever is, uh, let's see if I can manage to move to the next one. Just a, a brief reminder of what we use the uh, term ICCAs for, which is not an acronym, it is an abbreviation for territories and areas conserved by indigenous peoples and local communities, which some of us <clears throat> prefer calling the jewels or the seeds uh, in a more organic way of biocultural diversity around the world. Um, ICCAs are actually found all over the world in all types of ecosystems and cultures. And of course, uh, the term ICCAs is just for international cross-cultural exchange, but locally they have their own names and indeed they are extremely diverse. However, uh, they have all three characteristics and we entered into those in some details and into the properties of um, ICCAs in details in the first seminars. But just quickly, I would like to remind here of those three characteristics. The first is that in all ICCAs, you find a community, an indigenous peoples or a community and a natural area or a territory and a very strong bond uh, relying connecting the two. And then you also find that that community had through time the capacity, the power, the somehow the uh, moral or legal authority to enforce decision. So that's what we call a functioning governance institution. Importantly, it is not necessary that this is legal power, but it is what happened in reality, de facto. And finally, the third characteristic is that that power, that exercise a set of decisions by the community, these practices have led to the conservation of nature and the livelihood, the positive livelihood of the community itself through a variety of phenomena. So three characteristics of ICCAs, strong bond between a community and territory, community able to take and enforce decisions, uh, its own rules on the territory, and the positive results of those rules, positive for nature and for culture and the people themselves. Now, let me introduce uh, a, a typology of ICCAs that is uh, defined with reference to the three characteristics. The first uh, of these, again, three types, and I like to show them to you so that you keep them in mind, is that there are defined ICCAs. And these are the, the ICCAs that exhibit all three characteristics that we have just um, described. So the connection, the, the governance institution, and the positive results for nature and the community. But not all ICCAs in the world in fact, exhibit the tree. So we talk in terms of disrupted ICCAs when there are ICCAs that might have had the three characteristics in the past, but not today. They may still have one or two, but because of some, some set of problems, disturbances, events that the communities often was not able to control, now some uh, one or even more of these characteristics are eroding, are less strong. So we call them disrupted ICCAs, but usually the communities, or at least a good part of the community, is willing and is engaged to recreate the three conditions. And so we call them disrupted ICCAs. Finally, there are ICCAs that never existed as such in the past, but today the community is convinced that they have the potential of developing these three characteristics. And uh, somehow they, they are even getting organized today to uh, create those. And they are called the desired 
ICCAs. Another term uh, that I would like to define together with you is the one of emblematic ICCAs. Uh, we call emblematic ICCAs those that are very um, strong and capable of inspiring others. So they may be a representative and very highly visible sites of a, a particular country or, or culture. Um, and they, they it's, notice that it's not necessary that they are perfect or that they have no problems. In fact, they might be under a serious threat, but because they are so visible, because they are so important for a particular people, if the, the, the process of self-strengthening would be successful, they would have a tremendous capacity to inspire others, to, to be an example uh, for others. So they have uh, charisma, they have a great potential for a particular culture. So why should ICCA strengthen themselves? Well, uh, first of all, because of their value. I mean, I'm not going to go through again the values of ICCAs that were described in the first webinars, but also in because they are not safe uh, today. They are under amazing pressures and threats. And those pressures and threats are both um, from outside and sometimes even from within through processes of acculturation. So the, the threats uh, bear upon nature, but also about the diversity of culture, the uniqueness of the cultures that are expressed in ACCAs through loss of language, culture, wisdom, and especially local institution. But also, also because there are today opportunities. There is, um, there is an attempt from various quarters to support uh, these ACCAs that are being discovered more and more in the world by a variety of organizations for exactly their values and their potential. So what kind of support is available? Well, uh, the ICCA consortium that I'm having the honor of representing here together with Emma this morning is ready to provide technical support. But the uh, Jeff Small Grants program of UNDP also provides financial support to uh, mostly countries so-called in the in the south in the developing world so this uh, graphics that i'm showing here is a strategic process by which jeff sgp is uh, providing resources to so-called national catalytic organizations that are um, expected to facilitate the self-strengthening of emblematic iccas in the pilot countries of, uh, uh, there are 26 pilot countries of an initiative called Global Support Initiatives to ICCAs. So this national catalytic organization uh, will start, you know, leading emblematic ICCAs through this process. And there are also packages of funds uh, that are small grants supposed to go to the actual communities who are um, governing and managing their ACCAs. And there is overall some support to national ICCA networking and advocacy. Now, uh, if a community wishes to embark in this process to strengthen its own ACCAs, how could it do it? So there is guidance available, and this is part of the technical uh, support provided by the consortium that I was mentioning above. Uh, the, the guidance is available in, uh, in a document that is uh, in internet, uh, in our website, and it is available in three languages. And uh, just to give you a sense of this guidance, I put up this picture because it is somehow a summary, and I will go into the details of all these steps that are in this summary, but I just wanted to give you a broad view to begin with. So imagine that you have an ICCAs and its custodian community, and through the National Catalytic Organization, there is a facilitator or someone who 
arrives and interacts with the community and starts the process, tries to trigger the process of self-strengthening. And this triggering uh, goes towards the, the setting up, the, the autonomous, the totally voluntary and self-express um, setting up of a local team that is in charge of the process. And the local team accompanies the community through a variety of steps. I don't know if you see my, my cursor here. Uh, at the beginning, there is a need for a self-identification then a better description of the ICCAs and documentation. And there is a, you know, even deeper understanding of what are the strengths, the weaknesses, and the, the issues that can lead towards resilience, uh, security of the ICCAs. Then there is a moment of deciding what we want as a community, what we want for our conserved territory. And so planning together, and eventually receiving some support from outside if uh, support is uh, needed and desired. Then there is a moment of wanting possibly to communicate about SCCAs. And then there is a beautiful, important moment when the ICCAs opens up to the rest of ICCAs in the particular country and develops some initiatives together with the others. As you can see here, this blue thing that said there are larger scale networks of ICCAs initially in the country and then possibly in the region and in the world. And so there is a process of registering into a national or international registry. And there is the idea of putting the strengths of these ICCAs together to advocate for appropriate recognition and support. So as you can see, there is a process of strengthening and as part of the process, there is the idea that the community at all times needs to figure out where, where are we, what are we doing? So there is monitoring and exploring what is going on with the governance of our own uh, territory. Now, uh, let me say that there is one and basic main method that is applied in the self-strengthening process and it is the method of grassroots discussions on the basis of meaningful questions. So it is the people themselves who are in charge, who are the community, who are uh, in control of the process and they have to find within themselves through discussion the meaning of what they are doing. A facilitator, especially at the beginning, especially in the um, creation of the small uh, local team or larger local team is very useful, but the grassroots discussion is what it's all about. There is no solution imported from outside and there is a need for a tremendous flexibility to adjust to the particular conditions internal and external of the community itself. Let me also remind everyone that uh, what does it mean for an ICCA to be strong? And the experience of the consortium is that an ICCA is as strong as its own community is strong. So if the custodian community is strong and can demonstrate integrity, determination, uh, capacity to act together as one, then the ICCA is strong. And if the three characteristics are fully there, what we said before, the defined ICCAs, then we, we feel that there is some security, there is some sense of uh, stability and uh, capacity to uh, withstand change. So what is the process? I'm going to go through the process again in much more detail now. So the process has uh, uh, been identified as having seven steps. But as I said, these are some sort of ideal seven steps. You can uh, take uh, them in whatever order you think it is uh, appropriate, although they have some logical order here. You can also uh, consider that uh, maybe some steps are useless for you because you have read it taken before or because they are not particularly important. It is up for grabs. It is 
to not something that is a blueprint, it is a set of suggestions and tools that are available in the uh, documentation that uh, I noted before, and you can ask also later for the correct link and so on. So it's really an indication for you to take, to use, to let go as you consider useful for your own case. Let's start. So the, the first step, what we call also the module one, is about enhancing self-awareness and planning. So it has uh, three main um, characteristics and, and three main elements to keep in mind. First of all, let's not rush. Let's make sure that the community has time to discuss and to decide. Second, uh, let's enhance as much as possible self-awareness of what the ACCA is uh, and what are its conditions. And uh, if it needs strengthening, let's properly plan for that. So first point, time to discuss and decide on its own. Uh, we, some of us at least, have experience of visiting communities and unfortunately often it happens that these are flash visits. You know, you have just a, a day or two and there is no time to meet really properly the, the, the community in general. So these sorts of um, a flash visit, as I, as I call them here, uh, may be not appropriate for a true process. There is, there is a time is needed to identify the real movers in a community. It's time for having discussions that are human, they are convivial, they are frank, but they do not you know, disrupt the life of the community. It's much better to wait until normally a community has a, has a large meeting and to participate in that. And the, the important thing for the uh, facilitator is to make sure that there is enough time to identify a proper local team that is going to take on the, the charge and the responsibility for the process. So in this, identifying true community leaders, not the ones who are coming uh, first to meet uh, the, 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 the foreigners, the newcomers and so on, but finding the true ones who are respected, who are loved, who are representing the community is fundamental. And in my definition of a leader, a leader is a person who is able to bring the best out of others. You know, we, we all have within ourselves something that is really good and something that is really bad. A good leader is going to get us all the good we can be. And a bad leader, and unfortunately there are many, and many are today in the world really openly at, you know, unleashed, get us to be the worst we can all be. Second, uh, the point was becoming aware of the ICCAs. And so it's starting these grassroots discussions. Um, the local team should not behave as, a, as small chiefs, you know, but really facilitators of these grassroots discussions by providing right questions and doing so in an attitude of opening up the participation. And the guidance that I mentioned to you is available provides real large bundles of such questions that are not appropriate for every place, but you know, every small uh, local team uh, could consider and then say, ah, yes, these questions are very important for us. So the questions are about the link between the communities and the territory, looking at the history, the, the, the cultural relations, the spiritual relation, the economic relations, looking at community governance. How is it that community manages to uh, identify the, the correct rules for governing and managing that particular territory? How is it that it manages to enforce decisions or not? Then looking at the status of the environment and the status of the 
livelihoods of the community and thereby figuring out are, are we really a fantastic examples of perfectly strong and healthy ACCA or are we having some problems? Are we disrupted? By what? How? Whom? Do we want to improve? And so on. So this is the basic uh, self-awareness of the ICCAs. And then if we want to strengthen, we need to plan ahead and figure out how uh, we are going to enhance the strength of our ICCAs. It's important to plan, but also it's important to remain flexible car because it is, uh, it is a fact of life. Plans are a, an interesting uh, element of guidance, but should never be taken as, you know, just like uh, this is going to happen this way. Humanity is such that things change. So, but we should be having clear what is the vision where the community wants to go. Is the community ready to engage for getting to, to that vision? How exactly and uh, what kind of means and, and uh, capacities we have, etc. So, uh, module two, step two, describing and documenting the ICCAs. So what does it mean? Describing the characteristics, describing the values and gathering and generating, organizing the information that is necessary to document the ICCAs. So describing means what, uh, what we need to really have a good description of our ICCAs. So in discussions, uh, in grassroots discussions, we may want to look at the territory, first of all, are there boundaries, what kind of resources are there, inventories of the species, what kind of seasonal variability, and also the community. Who is part of the community? Who is not part? What is our governance systems? What is our management systems for the natural resources? And again, uh, organizing, do we have a vision and life plan? Do we have particular values that are crucial for us. Now for all this, uh, there is one method that I bet all of you have uh, sooner or later uh, used, but you may want to use more and more, and it's the one of uh, participatory maps. And participatory maps throughout the world have been an aggregation point because it, it, something visual like a map is easily understood by uh, most people and actually engages them to describe what is of importance and value for them. So all over the world, in all kinds of situations, participatory maps have been in fact used, uh, as you can see here, you know, in, on the ground, on paper, in, in poor or rich environments all over the world, they have managed to pull people together to make visible what is important for them in their territories. Now, the, the initial gathering of information should give way sooner or later to some form of organization of the information and even sometimes realizing that something is missing. So we need to go and get that information through purposeful research. So we want to systematize the information into what is called a documentation of the ICCAs. And you can have many things there, I mean, from the maps to the inventories to a variety of uh, uh, stated uh, visions for the future, etc. And uh, why it's important to document? Because the documentation is something that stays and also is able to demonstrate the community knowledge and the capacities to govern and manage their territories and to be, you know, in fact, shared to, 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 to advocate, to argue that there are rights behind these capacities and this knowledge. So the discussion questions here are, so what information is really crucial to document and demonstrate our ICCAs? Under what form do we need it? If we want to share it, the form should be something solid, for instance, that can be multiplied and passed on. But in fact, 
do we want to share that information? This is a very crucial question for many community. Do we want to, <coughs> sorry, do we want to share our data? Why? Why do we want to share it? How do we want to share it? Are there threats in sharing our data? Are there opportunities? And in this, let's please always remember that the data about the ICCAs is the property of the community, is not the property of the facilitators who may be still around and trying to facilitate the process. Those facilitators should keep their hands in their pockets facilitate the process if they have been received and welcomed by the communities, but never go away with the data because the data should be held by the communities themselves and they should be given the free prior and informed consent if the data is to be uh, disseminated. Let's move to module three, understanding the ICCAs. Understanding means pulling the data together, but also making sense of those data. So what is important for the ICCAs is that it is able to be secured, to, to have a, a, a certain amount of resilience, which is the capacity to respond positively to change. So uh, in module three, we try to identify the key indicators that the community may uh, want to use to follow change. And so the discussion questions uh, have to do with what the consortium has uh, identified as the building blocks of resilience and, and security for NICCAs. And this is nothing new. I've talked about this before. The integrity and strength of the custodian community is a fundamental element. So what indicators give us information on that? the link between the community and the territory. Again, what indicators tell us about the strength of that link? Then the functioning of the governance institution. How do we measure, how do we assess whether it is functioning or not? And then the state of conservation of the territory and the well-being of the community. Now, uh, because we work together with Jeff SGP and Jeff SGP is asking us to provide some overall indicators, in the guidance you will find that there is a, a small uh, way to create a score for the resilience and security of the particular ICCAs. I don't like that idea because I think that the score can be um, actually you know, leading us astray. More than the score, it's quite important to have an analysis of change and understanding what are the important indicators for the community, which may make, mean, make meaning only for them. And it is quite fundamental to, for them to understand the strengths, the weaknesses, the problems, the threats, the opportunities that they feel. So there are plenty of discussion questions that can be provided and are offered in, in the guidance. Module four is, okay, we have figured out strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, the threats. So what do we want to do? And what do we need in order to do this? So the communities need to identify their and agree upon their priori priorities on the basis of what they have understood about their ICCAs. And let me say that instead of going straight into, oh yes, 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 we want a project. We want to write to a donor and ask for resources. It's much better to think it through. Is there anything that we can do without external help about what we have identified as needed. What can we do ourselves? Then what can we do with the neighboring communities, with other groups like us, close to us? And only if it is really impossible that we solve it ourselves, then let's, yes, uh, develop a project and maybe go to the Jeff SGP office uh, or to others, because it's not only Jeff SGP, there are donors in every country and situation, including in, uh, in Europe and uh, in the North and so on. Communities can find external help. But my sense is that the fundamental 
health needs to come from within without any external coming and external, um, let's say, uh, crutches. So, and another important point is instead of looking for money as the crucial thing that we need, let's also look at issues that are fundamental for that relationship between the community and the territory. Do we have secured connections, secure rights, secure ownership? Do we have enough autonomy to be able to cope with threats and respond to opportunities? Now, yes, if truly necessary, um, project proposals can be produced, can be elaborated, and the National Catalytic Organization um, supported by Jeff GP through some discussion questions can do exactly that. So what is it that we really need in order to be able to strengthen our own ICCAs, um, but also being, being sort of uh, critical, you know, will the project really help and up to what point? Up to what point the community itself is going to be able and willing to invest its own resources? Do we have the capacity? Do we have the time to manage a project? And are we able to actually respond to all the needs of a project? Financial management, uh, communication capacities, and so on. And then are we going to possibly have negative effects from that project? You know, so many projects have actually destroyed communities. You can, um, you know, create jealousies, you can create conflicts, and uh, the money, the influx of money can be absolutely pernicious. So think it well in advance and uh, put in place safe safeguards to make sure that the negative is not uh, more important than the positive. Module five is actually taking action with or without the outside support and monitoring the results. It is the time in which you implement the initiatives and uh, while you're implementing it, you just take care of understanding what you're doing, discuss issues regularly within the community and learn from the action. So the first discussion questions are about, are we actually obtaining the results that we wanted to obtain? And in fact, do they seem to, re to get us to reach the goals? It's not only the results, but also the uh, further goals. And here uh, there are the, the issues and the questions about following our own process are we you know doing the, the self-strengthening according to the indicators we were saying above and uh, whatever uh, please consider that if you are having a jeff sgp support the monitoring is mandatory so the community should be aware of what is happening all the time and the, the there are indicators that can help and they should be valid relevant specific, simple, and so on. This, this is something that requires a, a sort of in-depth analysis that we don't have uh, uh, the time to do now, but uh, you'll have it in the guidance what it means to have these type of indicators. But let me encourage also in the process of taking action to understand whether the governance of the community is functioning well and going through quality of governance, you know, the, the characteristics of the quality uh, and the vitality of governance. Again, um, these uh, characteristics are described with questions more in detail in the written guidance, but it is crucially important to maintain that self-reflection for the community. Are we able to respond to change? And however, not to be, let, let's not be intimidated by others from outside who may require that we have a governance of one type or another. It's important that the governance institutions of the communities are understood, analyzed, and assessed from within, according to their own internal values. I know that this uh, can be disputed, but it's quite important that um, communities are not bullied from outside. 
Um, yes, the crucial thing of the monitoring and evaluation protocol, which is the, this set of indication and the, the plan that we are having uh, for, uh, for the change, is to make sure that we are not, because of the project, because of the initiative, going somewhere where we did not want to go. The community should have its own vision, should have, uh, in, in Latin America, many communities, many indigenous peoples have their own uh, plan de, plans de vida, uh, life plans. Are we reaching, uh, are we going towards, are we approaching our life plan? And so we need to be aware of what is that is changing. What does it make sense that is changing? Um, does it uh, what the changes that are happening are getting us to be exactly as we want to be? And you know, I put here a, a marvelous image, which for me represents one of the best examples I have seen in in of of a convivial and wonderful community life. It's just like a such a peaceful, clean, rich, exuberant, natural environment. And let me say that right now in place of this, uh, of this road, there is a, a tarmac road with fast uh, going um, uh, vehicles, sometimes very dangerous vehicles, and, uh, and there are now car accidents and so on. Uh, the community may or may not prefer that vision, but for me, it is a, a, some, some, is an element of reflection. Are we really moving towards a better life for the community and a better environment in what we are producing with our action? Module six is about communicating. It's, uh, you know, the, the ICCAs may want to communicate uh, internally, and that's very important, and also with other communities and nationally and internationally. There are many reasons to communicate. Uh, a very important one to communicate internally, we have talked about, is about enhancing self-awareness. But we also may want to inform and inspire others, other communities, other people, donors, if um, it is really what uh, the community wants. And we also may want to hear others because communication can also be two ways, you know, not only one way. We want to hear others and start collaboration. So the crucial discussion questions what do we want to share? What do we want to communicate? To whom? What is our audience? What are the aims of our communication? What we hope to achieve? Are there risks in communicating? Are there benefits? And do we want just to pass on information or we also want to hear from others and have a dialogue? So in order to communicate, the encouragement is to identify in the community people with uh, will and capacities to communicate who would be able to use the uh, documentation that they have collected and uh, in fact use it through a variety of media. Uh, you can have uh, radio, TV, celebration, videos, uh, photo stories, social media, all sorts of meetings, you know, there are a variety of things. This, this picture here um, gives you a, a particularly effective ways of communicating with local language, uh, local uh, radio that has been used in, in Casamance, which is the southernmost part of uh, Senegal, to um, interact with the, the local people at large and including people who need to respect the rules of the local uh, fishermen uh, community conserved uh, areas uh, that really requires the knowledge and the respect of others. So in order to communicate they have these great radio programs in which people can call in with telephone and they hear their voice on the radio and they express their doubts, they express their problems with the ICCAs and the people uh, of the community that uh, governs and manages the ICCAs can respond, can interact and so on. So it's, it's a great way of uh, creating solidity and strength in the ICCA itself. 
Finally, the seventh module, the one that opens up to the rest of uh, uh, ICCAs in the country and beyond. And it is a module about networking and advocating for better recognition and support. So it has uh, in itself several elements, networking with others, you know, realizing there is not only one community, one ICCA, there are hopefully, inshallah, many, learning about uh, the fact that uh, the international policy has provided a very strong um, support to recognizing and supporting ICCAs, uh, possibly registering into a national or international registry and evaluating what is uh, possible in the national and policy and legislation to recognize CCAs and eventually engage in policy advocacy. If uh, the, the, the current legislation and policy is not good enough, maybe it could be changed, it could be improved, or sometimes it could just be applied because sometimes the policy and legislation is there but it's not applied. So how do we develop a national network, meaning links, alliances for mutual strengthening, etc. Uh, the advice is to start with the neighboring communities or if it is uh, the case of an indigenous peoples, linking with other indigenous peoples in the region. And in fact, uh, it is most likely that there are already alliances and uh, you know, um, organizations of uh, peer support. So start from those, but also look at others that exist uh, in nationally or internationally. And uh, uh, there are three types of networks, but they could be, in fact, even many more, but let's say three types that uh, the ICCA consortium has uh, identified in many countries. There are informal working groups. In, in a working group, you can have representatives of organization, individuals, NGOs, you name it, is rather informal, but it can be very flexible and very, very useful. There is a, a working group on ICCAs in Indonesia that has been doing wonderful things for now several years. There are coalitions or platforms. They are a bit more formal and they usually have one aim, one goal that they share and they, uh, in fact, uh, aim to achieve. And then there are even more formal associations or federations, and there are uh, several such of uh, ICCA's uh, communities in the world. In particular, in uh, the Philippines, there is Bukluran, which is a, a national federations of uh, indigenous peoples who have their own ICCAs. Why it is important to be formalized is that because that federation can represent uh, the ICCAs to other actors, often the government and so on, and can receive and use more substantial amount of resources. Now, there are many ways to, pro to promote a national uh, network. I mean, sometimes it is as simple as organizing a meeting. And um, however, let's, uh, remember that networks cannot be sort of willed from outside. They need to emerge from a felt need of the members of the network. And uh, the network itself is important because if ICCAs want to register internationally, is needed to have the peer support and peer review that is necessary to register in the ICCA International Registry in Cambridge that is held by UNEP WCMC. Uh, so uh, the facilitator of the self-strengthening process can support also the setting up of the ICCA networks. And as I said, the national catalytic organizations have it in their terms of reference. But however, they should not look into the content of what the networks wants to do. The content should be identified by the members. So learning about international recognition of ICCAs is important for national networks because it can give them a sense of, wow, I mean, we, we have internationally much more recognition that we might have uh, for the values of our CCAs nationally. So you should know that IUCN and CBDs 
have uh, stressed the conservation benefits of ICCAs, but not only that. I mean, uh, indigenous peoples also have uh, a recognized right to self-determination, especially uh, since the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. And there are also a variety of other grounds for um, respected local collective territorial rights. And in order for this international recognition to really come to play uh, effectively at the local level, it's important to have sometimes the support of uh, some knowledgeable and dedicated civil society organization in the country or relevant UN agencies or others. Now, as I already mentioned a little bit, there is a, the possibility for an ICCA to register in a national or international registry. In fact, uh, the UNEP World Conservation and Monitoring Center can register ICCAs either as uh, um, uh, within the WDPA, the World Database on Protected Areas, if they have uh, the characteristics of uh, protected areas according to IUCN, or uh, it, they can register them only in the ICCA registry that is specific to ICCAs. The, in order to register, the community, the indigenous people, has to complete a free prior and informed consent form and a questionnaire. And as I said, there is a need for a peer support and peer review process because just to uh, figure out whether the FPIC form has been followed properly, there should be some form of a, of uh, you know sounding board uh, mechanism it says who says that the free prior and informed consent has been followed in a sound way so who said that this is a genuine iccas only the peer only other iccas can do that not an expert not someone coming from cambridge not someone coming from the government it is a peer support mechanism of other SCCAs in the countries that can and should do that. So these peer support mechanisms already exist in places such as Spain, uh, the Philippines, Iran, and right now as we speak, in these very days, there has been a gathering of uh, some uh, such mechanisms to um, discuss the ways in which they are doing so with others. The important point is that uh, every community should decide on a case-by-case -case basis whether or not sending their uh, own data for registration. And uh, there is another important point is that if they don't want to share the data publicly, they can even register in the international registry um, in a confidential way. So the crucial discussion questions for a community before they register is do we want more visibility for ICCAs? Do we want more visibility and registration because we want to be more uh, proud of ourselves, better, better internally aware of what we have? Do we want to have more security and protection um, nationally because we are, not, we, we are under threat, we are not recognized enough? Or uh, do we want to have better international relations, support from donors from outside? Uh, would it be better to remain visible or invisible? Would it be better to be registered as a protected area or as a conserved area and so on? Um, another important element before we advocate for anything is to figure out what is possible, what is available in the national and legislation policy and policy two recognize and support ICCAs. Uh, you, should, so you should know that uh, various forms of legal and political recognition are possible and in some cases the recognition comes within the law on protected areas for instance, in others it comes from uh, legislation on forests, on wetlands, um, collective rights of indigenous peoples and so on. So th th there are a variety of sources of legal and policy recognition for ACCAs. Um, what many, many 
communities want is for their own internal organization to be recognized as the legitimate governance institution for the protected or conserved areas. Now, what is crucially interesting today is that there are some countries and uh, I'm quoting here the Philippines because they have a, a very advanced element of legislation, but I know that Colombia is also having a, a similar uh, legislation in, uh, in a gestation process that are developing specific legislation on ACCAs. And why is this important? It's because there are many countries where uh, indigenous peoples or even Afro-Colombian black communities uh, for the matter have collective rights on their land and many more than, than, uh, than a few in fact you know organ Mexico, Canada, Australia they, they do recognize collective rights to land but basically none rec so far recognizes rights to say no to underground exploitation of those resources and you teach me that you may have all the collective rights the land you want but if someone comes in and uh, has a, a mining um, enterprise taking over uh, your rights are meaningless so if through a legislation on accas the communities, the indigenous peoples could say this is nationally and internationally recognized for the value for biodiversity and, and for their our own capacity to conserve nature, then at that point we can even stop underground exploitation. So uh, understand options available and go on for that. This is my last slide, so I think it's time to wrap up. Yes, I will. Uh, engage in advocacy for appropriate recognition and support. Now, the need for legal, social and practical recognition and appropriate support needs to be, first of all, um, assessed. And then once, once you have the, the network, uh, you can advocate together. You can be stronger and in advocacy together. So, um, as I said before, allies and civil society organization and legal expertise, they may want to ask together, we want recognition of what? Do we want to have collective governance, collective property, collective management, collective views? Do we want to have better support and recognition to our own rule for, rules for governing and managing the territory? Do we want capacity building? Anything else? The crucial thing here to remember is that the integrity and strength of the communities are a fundamental condition. The uh, support should never compromise that. And uh, again, let me put a word of caution. If we are asking for money, money is dangerous and can destroy any community. So I would like to thank you for your attention and these are some of uh, the logos of the members of the consortium. I think at the moment we are well above a hundred but before leaving and uh, before hearing whether you have questions yourself let me um, place a few questions for you. Uh, do you know of any ICCAs in your country or elsewhere? Would you say that uh, the ICCA that first comes to your mind is well defined, disrupted or desired? Would it be useful for uh, the custodian community of the ICCAs to go through some of the process steps that we have discussed? And if yes, uh, which step seems to you the most essential? So I leave you with these questions and uh, with my thanks again for your patience. I know that this was a fairly long and uh, um, webinars, but now uh, I'm all to hear from you and Emma uh, is going to facilitate uh, questions, comments and whatever. Thank you so much.
Thank you, Grazia. Um, I guess that we can take a little bit more time for the question than what was planned. The initial plan was one hour, but let's go ahead. I just would like to, uh, for you to take some time to prepare your questions, eventually raise the hand so that you can uh, say your, your question or write it down to in the conversation in the chat box. I would like to show you just really briefly um, where in our website you can uh, find all of this information. Um, Gratia, I'll take the uh, I'll take the screen for a while. Then you can put your questions again. Uh, here is the ICC Consortium website. I know last time I presented it, but this time I want to to show you another section. When you go on that site, so this website is conceived as one part for the ICCAs and one part for the ICCA Consortium. Uh, when you go to this side, uh, the green one, you have several categories, one on Discover, which is actually an introduction to ICCAs, one on uh, contents, there are videos, there is a lot of documents, a lot of texts at the different scales, and there is this, sections that, this section that is called Take Action. Um, on this one, you have a brief recap of what uh, Gratia just explained, um, which is this part, understand and strengthen ICCAs. And we try to gather here all of the information, the, the modules, the steps that Gratia, Gratia describes uh, are here. So I invite you to consult it and also to check the other sections such as communicate your ICCA create a critical mass of support which explain different kind of networks that Gretzia mentioned. So I think that's all for me now. Maybe Gretzia, if you want to place your... Uh, yeah, your... you may also want to say, am I where to find yeah. the actual guidance? Of course. Okay, let's go back. <laughs> Here I am. So I'm gonna move now to the side of the ICC Consortium. I guess you can see uh, clearly, um, um, uh, I have the window of the Zoom in the middle. Uh, so on the side of the ICCA consortium, you can go to this section, what we do, the publications, the key resources, if I click on it, yeah, the key resources and here you have the self-strengthening ICCA's uh, process, this, uh, the process of self-strengthening of ICCA's, um, and you can directly... Yeah, and it is in three languages. You can click French or Spanish. Yeah. And then uh, if you click that, uh, that link there that she's uh, showing, you can download the whole process, and it is, uh, it is quite... Um, a document with all the the question the grassroots uh, discussion questions and so on and, and to know a little bit more about iccas and the icca consortium please visit our website or simply write to us all the informations and links are in the description of the video here below thank you very much